Hey, welcome back. Uh, this will be our first prayer video for the week. Um, I want to use technology. Uh, my printer, sometimes it's working good, sometimes it seems like it's got uh, bleeding going on with the, the black ink. So, something I got to look at. Um, but uh, we're going to start our prayer request. Uh, this is a testimony. But as we go through the testimony, there's some things in here from um, Brother Ryan that uh, him and his wife, it's a testimony, but it's also some things him and his wife are going through that he could really use some prayer from the brethren. Okay. So I'm going to read this. Uh, Greetings, Brother Philip. Grace and peace to you from the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share our story with you starting back in January. If you think this could be an encouragement, you're welcome to share the whole thing or any part of it. I think it is. It's very encouraging. My prayer request on Patreon will fill in some of the more recent details. And I'm not reading those because I didn't ask permission. Um, and Patreon is... Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ can go to Patreon to get more detail. But this is a great testimony. This all started back in January when I received a phone call from my younger brother one afternoon. Evidently my dad had been drinking and was in tears telling my brother he would like to shoot himself in the head because he was so upset about my changed life that Ryan got saved. And if you remember in the past I was asking for prayer in the, in the, uh, for Ryan. His dad was in the hospital there for a while. So Ryan got saved and his dad didn't like it. How many of you have gone through that where you're, um, you get saved or God saves you and you have a changed life, and family members start looking at you differently. I've never had a family member hate me, so I, I feel for a lot of the people that do go through that. My brother, already drunk, drove to my parents' house and continued drinking with my dad. Over the next three days, we had repeated obscene and vulgar phone calls from my drunk brother. I'm sorry, Ryan, that you had to go through that. We had our door barricaded at night in case he drove out to my house to terrorize us in person. It seemed like my entire family was family had gone stark raving mad. Now this is a it's it's manifest physically what he's going through, but yeah, um, we're I was blessed I didn't have to go through what Ryan's going through, but when you get saved. Um, you're going to look at your lost family and friends and be like, they got to be insane to do what they're doing. While all this was going on, I was forced to give my two-week notice at work because my employer had started doing work at a movie theater with some professing Christians like the ones Brother Brian had to deal with up in Maine. So at this point, I was out of work with a brother nearby that seemed... Like he would like to kill us. Thankfully the Lord flipped his truck over and took his driver's license without killing him a few weeks after the family blowout. As the family's arguing. Blowout. <clears throat> so, and God works. God, see, all things work together for good to them that... Uh, I say that so often sometimes I say it too fast. All things work together to, for good to them that trust God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Uh, that wasn't an accident that the brothers, his brother that was drunk and was threatening him, making vulgar um, phone calls that the truck just flipped, it was an accident. No, I believe it happened for a reason. God has his hand on all this. I'm thankful the Lord spared my brother's life. Perhaps he could still get saved. And that's a great attitude, Brian. Great, great attitude to have. It's painful to watch him waste away in his addictions. It's, it's painful to see any family member or loved one that's on their way to hell, that rejects truth, that just lives like the world and lives in wicked sin. But yes, especially, I, I can't fathom it yet. It hasn't happened to me. It's happening to Ryan and probably other brothers and sisters in Christ out there where you have a loved one that's physically deteriorating because of how he lives his life or her life. And... It eats at you. You just you want them to get saved. You want them to go to Jesus to get saved, and they refuse to. Um, uh, 
Now, after that situation, he's saying, that gave us some breathing room. The Lord also kept my mother busy by getting my grandmother kicked out of the assisted living and into my parents' house for a few weeks. Also during this time, my dad had two major surgeries and spent over a month in the hospital. I remember putting that out there to pray for Ryan. Um, I was hoping that uh, during that time period that uh, his dad might have dropped his defenses, uh, his self-righteousness, and they could get through to him with the gospel. Um, so God's distracting these people that are attacking or coming down on Ryan and his family. Like I said, not an accident. Next, I see. We have been considering going on a road trip with my pickup before all this. It seems like now was the time to get out of town and try to do something for the Lord. We had lots of tracks of all sorts and scripture on the back of our of my truck. He showed me pictures, which I won't be showing, but. Um, it does make a difference if you have the opportunity uh, buy the uh, magnets like I did or put stickers on your bumper um, people do read them they might not like them but people do read them and he had some pretty good ones so we departed in mid-march in bet between nor'eastern we journeyed from southern New Hampshire up through upstate New York in an attempt to get out of the snow belt as quickly as possible. It took 700 miles and a stopover in Alfred, New Mexico. Or I'm sorry, Alfred, Alfred, New York to get out of the snow. We made it a habit to drive slightly slower then prevailing traffic so more people could see the back of the truck. We also stopped at almost every rest area and welcome center so we could leave tracks in the tourist flyers. Once we reached Ohio, the weather was warm enough for us to sleep in the back of the truck in the, in the cap. I think, yeah. At the very first campground we stayed at, we found some DVDs left behind from some pre-Vatican II Catholics from New York. I destroyed the DVDs, praise the Lord, and a book left behind in the outhouse. The website was, and he links the website. Um, in our travels, we spent two months in the truck, two nights in a hotel, and covered over 8,000 miles with two major mechanical failures. Okay, they were going through a lot in their life and they said, you know what, we're going to go do something for the Lord. And this should be encouraging to the brothers and sisters of Christ. When something bad starts happening, do something for the Lord. Go hand out gospel tracts. Go lay gospel tracts everywhere. Say, you know what, I'm dropping everything that I want to do. Not that I need to do, but I want to do. And I'm just going to spend time with the Lord. Um, when bad things are happening to you, like that were happening to Ryan and his family, don't just sit there and wallow in the misery and get drowned by it, you know. Start doing stuff for the Lord, and they did. And this is amazing. 8,000 miles. Amazing trip. Okay, two mechanical failures. A power steering rack and then rear bearings and front brakes and rotors and a caliper. We traveled from New Hampshire to southwest Texas, then up to the Four Corners area, where we spent two weeks tracking big box stores and anywhere we could with what every Native American should know. Gospel track for the people, in, I guess, in that area. We also had our power steering rack replaced by a Navajo man in Farmington, New Mexico during this time. We are thankful the Lord kept us in the area so we could warn the Native people of their great need of salvation. I can't say if anyone was saved or not, but at least we sowed a lot of seeds. Amen. That's our job. We're not to be car salesmen. We're not to beat people over the head with the gospel. We just plant seeds. And I believe what Ryan said here, yes, you planted a lot of seeds. I could almost write a book about this trip and everything going on right now. Maybe in the future I can write 
up more about our experiences. After this, we feel like we have a little more in common with Paul than we did before. And shipwrecked if you count the automotive problems when they couldn't go anywhere because they had to get the car fixed on. So, what he's struggling with, he put down 2 Corinthians 11, 26 through 27. And journeyings often, and perils of waters, and perils of robbers, and perils by mine own countrymen, and perils by the heathen, and perils in the city, and perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils among false brethren. Uh, verse 27, and weariness and painfulness, and watchings often, and hunger and thirst, and fastings often, and cold and naked nakedness. Okay. Ryan, thank you for sharing that. Um, hopefully, it encourages the brothers and sisters out there in Christ to realize that you're not alone. There's other people that are struggling with lost family members that are struggling worse than I am. Uh, they're struggling with the lost world worse than I am. Uh, that what they did, people will say it's an extreme, it's an extreme, going 8,000 miles. To me, if things were really that bad, I'd want to get away too and just spend time with the Lord and doing the Lord's work. If at home it gets really bad, uh, I always tell people, go for a walk in nature. Get away from it. Uh, you have high schoolers. Uh, they're still living at home, you know, that they, they're saved. Uh, there's been a change in their life. Uh, Brother JT, uh, he showed some pictures of him before he got saved. And he's only been saved for a couple years, I think, a year or two. But before, I asked him, I said, what's that wig on your head? <laughs> Give him a hard time. Or I think I said, it's a good thing you gave up that wig. Um, but they're in, sometimes you're going to be in a situation where you're going to have a lot of lost people around you. Let's say your family lives next door, like your parents live next door or whatnot. Or you have a lost um, man or woman or couple next door that's just a nightmare. You try witnessing to them and they're just so mean and everything. And you're like, I tell you, go for a walk. Pull out those cue cards, memory verse cue cards I always talk about. Start talking with the Lord as I talk about praying all the time. And get away from that situation. Take a step back, get away, and spend time with God. Then when you come back, you'll have more strength and more courage to deal with those situations. So, thank you, Ryan, and for sharing this about him and his wife's trip. And uh, another email I got was uh, talking about gospel tracts. And when I do my book, I have tons of books that I've got to go through. I want to do another book video showing all the neat books I've found. But I bought from Chick Publications, Soul Survivor, I bought a thousand of these. Then, I don't think it was a coincidence that the uh, Godhead versus the Trinity got brought up. And I was corrected by Scripture and through true brothers and sisters in Christ, that I need to stop saying Trinity, I need to stop saying God in three persons, because you won't find that in the Bible. Uh, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you won't find that in the Bible. And as God started working in me, and I did the video on engraven images, I realized that, I thought, man, I have the whole house ready. It's good, Lord, am I ready for you to come back today? And I'm like, I threw out those plates, the pagan gods that were on there, because they're from like China and Thailand and stuff like that. They were just souvenirs I had when I was lost. And I had them in a glass plate, a uh, glass case. And I'm like, okay, I'm good, right, Lord? I'm good. Then when I did that graven images study, I got convicted and I'm like, so I had to start going through a lot of the Bibles I'd collected, the magazines that I had, comic books from Chick Publications, and now even the Gospel. These were the last things that I kept holding on to because I wanted something to give away. And I'm going to have to find another set of gospel tracts. But in here, there's images of Jesus Christ. It says God in three persons. It talks about the Trinity. And I had a brother in Christ send me video, uh, pictures of some gospel tracts where the only picture it had was Jesus on the cross with his head down. He's bleeding and everything. And I'm like, my first thought was like, I want to say no because I understand that that really gives the image of what Jesus went through. And it played a big impact on me. I'm not being a hypocrite when I was reading some of the Chick Publication magazines. When it, there was one that it got really graphic about what Jesus went through. And it really, it's a slap upside the head. 
But the thing is, is either I can stand for the Bible or I can stand for the traditions of men. So when he talked to me, I told him, you know what, there's still a lot of good gospel tracts out there that don't do the image of Jesus. The Bible says you're not to liken, the, God, the Godhead is not likened unto, and the two things that apply to today mostly, graven images, yes, the Catholic Church makes statues. But for us, what we're used to is art and man's devices. We're used to movies, TV shows, video games where people are playing Jesus. Um, and comics where, you know, they have a dove as the Holy Spirit and Jesus and an old man sometimes as God the Father. Uh, or they'll do an outline, a body, a physical body outline that's kind of hollow or have stars in them and everything. It's weird. And saying that's God the Father, you know. And it just gets to the point where I threw all of these out. All of them out. And I, just, I still had tons of them left, but I just I burned them all. Why? Because you have to take a stand. You've got to take a stand. Either I'm going to stand for the God's perfect written word and do what's right by God, or am I going to turn my back on God's word for traditions of men? Uh, with the Trinity, you know, we've always done this. It's widely accepted among the body of Christ. Our church, the, the church fathers uh, in the past were okay with it. Um, they're not the standards. The Bible is. So I want to encourage brothers and sisters in Christ to go through your gospel tracts. If they say God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, burn them. If they say God in three persons, burn them. If they say Trinity instead of Godhead, burn them. If they show images of Jesus Christ, the whole, a, a dove as the Holy Spirit, or they try to do anything, an old man or uh, a see-through, like hollow-like body for God the Father, burn it. Better for you to stand up before God and Him saying, hey, you know what, eh, there probably wasn't too much wrong with it, than for you to stand before Him and say, hey, my, my word said you're not to make them, and you're not to bow down to them. Two separate commands. And I don't know if I said this before, but um, uh, David Daniels at Chick Publication says we can make them as long as we don't worship them. When I quoted that verse, he said, yeah, that's saying you can't make them and worship them. So I can make them as long as I don't worship them. Well, by that line of reasoning, if you flip it around, you can say, well, I can worship those pagan images as long as I didn't make them. When you try to take those two and say they're one, uh, command, it just becomes absolute lunacy. Okay? Um, they're two separate commands based on the same subject. You're not to make them, period. And whether you made them or not, you're not to worship them, period. Okay? You have to make them, period. Whether you're worshiping or not, you're not to make them. So David Daniels is not to be making images of the Godhead. Because it says in heaven or on earth, So, brother hit me up with that email. I told him, best to err on the side of caution. Get gospel tracts that are mostly words. And if they do have pictures, because I wasn't, like I said, I'm not against the pictures. It's just when they get, you get so prideful to the point that you think that you can ignore God's word and start putting images of Jesus Christ, because we want images, and you ignore scripture and the command not to do that. So if you can find gospel tracts that have images, but they do not do pictures of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is a dove, or God the Father images, by all means, use. I'm not against gospel tracts with images. I'm just against images of the Godhead, because the Bible's against it. I'm against uh, God in three persons. The Bible's against it. There's only one person of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. I'm against God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Bible's against it. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, there's only one capital G God, the Father. Only one God, the Father. There's no God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. There's only one God, the Father. And if Jesus is God, He's the Father. If He's not the Father, He's not God. It's that simple. But people don't like simple. Satan hates simple because he can't deceive people with simple. He's got to make things difficult. But for the prayer and testimony, um, I did. I handed out tracks like this left and right.
Now I've got to order some other ones or make some of my own. And I encourage the brothers and sisters in Christ out there to make some of your own. Take the square sheet, do four squares, and then when you print them out, you just fold them into a, uh, four squares. And that way you just leave them places. Um, it takes a lot of ink sometimes if you're trying to do pictures, but if uh, you're just doing words, uh, that's what's more important. These pictures aren't important. It's the words. And I think Chick Publication has forgotten that. Because if you look at their sales technique to sell Chick Tracks, there's a man that has a track that has words, you know, words, and he throws it on the ground, and the other guy's like that's handing them out says, oh man, next time, it's something along these lines, next time I'm going to use a Chick Track because it's got pictures. Okay? Pictures are not what's important. It's the word. But my encouragement to you is to put them in places where people have to sit and wait. That's the best places to put gospel tracks. Um, I, I know I'm just, I can only do it in the men's restroom, but um, the urinals, I'll leave them on the uh, toilet paper in the urinals because people have to sit there and use the restroom. Um, I'll leave them, if you're at a bus station or a place where a bus pick up where people have to set their weight for the bus, if there's little cubby holes, leave them in there. Um, airports, I leave them laying around. Uh, banks, you know, people are waiting in line or they go over to try to fill out something, they've got all their stuff there. You can slip a few in there. Uh, the best places i found if you're just going to leave tra gospel tracks is places where people, you know people are going to have to wait. They're going to have to sit and wait for a little bit. Uh, I'm on the coast, so there's a lot of places that have great views, like benches and places where they sit and can watch the ocean. Those are great places to leave gospel tracks. They're sitting there, they're enjoying the ocean, they see it, and they're like, they might get bored, or I, I, I want to re read it. So, be encouraged by Brother Ryan's story. Um, get away from it. If you're surrounded by so much mess and everything seems to fall apart, because of lost family members, uh, the lost world, lost neighbors, uh, lost people at work, and your work's just getting so horrible, like it's just a pain. Take some time to get away from it and really devote time to the Lord. You're supposed to be spending time with the Lord 24-7, but it never hurts to get away from there, those distractions, so you can truly focus on the Lord. So, thank you for our first video of prayer and testimonies. So... I'll see you in the next one.